Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Micah. Hey. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, first episode of 2022. Micah, you are on death's door. Um, yes. You do not have COVID, but you got like COVID's cousin. Yeah, I don't know what I got. I got um, <laughs> I got something that's that's giving me like barking cough. So <laughs> I'm uh I'm on death's door, but that is that is uh um not going to stop me from from uh mediocre mediocrely entertaining you people. That's I, all. I that's all they ask. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, just give in a mediocre performance for your Friday. There you go. Uh, so, yes, we are back um, to entertain you, maybe. I don't know. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, I weirdly did not get to watch nearly the amount of things I wanted to watch over break, which is unfortunate. Um, but I did, and I know that you did, uh, watch Don't Look Up, the... Um, the new Adam McKay film on Netflix starring um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Um, overall, what did you think of this movie? I really, uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I enjoy the, um, it's, it's absurdist and it's very, uh, the satire is, <laughs> There's no subtext. It's all text. It's right? all text. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so that could be, I can easily see someone knocking the movie for that, right? Because it's not subtle in who, um, in, in what it is saying and who, you know, it is talking about, um, us as a, as a, as a people. Doomed human, human race. race. Yes. Right. Um, but I absolutely loved it. And I, th it's, it's interesting seeing people who like and do not like this movie, seeing articles. Like I saw one article, I swear to God, I don't know why I keep following screen rant, but I think it's just because of the dude that comes out on Tuesday, the pitch meeting dude, because hmm. he's a genius, but the rest of screen rant is just, it's just dumb. <laughs> um, I saw a headline for a screen. So, some of their some of their writing is is not great, but some of it is like yeah, okay. <laughs> some of it is good, and some of it is just like what? And I don't even know if it's their the people writing the headlines. Look, let me tell you something, yo. If you have a bad headline, I'm not clicking your fucking thing. And one of the headlines was, "Could the comet really? Could a comet really hit Earth? Like, yo, that's not the point of the movie. That's not the point of this movie." <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, this um, is about climate change and COVID, guys. Like, and mostly climate right, change. Right. Like, come on, man. Like, this is this is. But I I really enjoyed it. I, it's it's about twenty minutes too long. Uh, and ten of those minutes, uh, is, is there's an Ariana Grande concert for some reason. <laughs> Like, I mean, I know you got a singer in your movie, but like, that don't mean they have to sing, right? Um, I, 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 I found the you. lyrics of that song to be pretty hilarious. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but at the same time, like, we're two hours and 10 minutes into this movie. Right. And, you know, I, I get the joke. Right. Um, I'm in for it. Right. Right. I, I don't, I don't need any more of this, but, um, but yeah, overall, I, I highly enjoyed it. I, I highly recommend that movie. Yeah, look, I thought it was I thought it was pretty fun. Um I I saw a lot of people didn't think it was as funny as it probably should have been because it was it's obviously labeled as a satire. And while I get that argument as a thing being labeled as satire, I would say that to me it's it's just as funny as the big short is. And it's it's not satirical like, I think there are different degrees of satire. Like, so I'm not mad at anybody who said, like, oh, I thought it'd be funny or whatever. Because that seems to be a big, like, that and then the second criticism is, like, it's it's not subtle. I'm like, yeah, we're about to die from a massive um, event. We don't have time for subtlety anymore. <laughs> like, we just, we just no, don't. Not anymore. Like, right. Not and anymore. I, think, I think that's kind of the point is the subtlety can't exist because this is too dangerous and it's too serious. Like you need to like, there's a moment where Leonardo DiCaprio has that massive speech and he's just like, 
we're all going to fucking die. Like, this is very serious. Like, stop with all the bullshit. And they're like, can we make it lighter and fun? Like, no, we can't. Like, we actually need to address this, right? But Yeah, this isn't, um, this isn't like a screwball comedy. Right, like... like um, like blazing saddles is a great satire, right? Like, yeah, you know, it, that's it, a, yeah, and that's that's very screwball, right? It is right? like it has specific jokes that they want to tell. Right. I, I look if if someone thinks that this movie is very preachy, I get it. It is <laughs> right. It's yeah, supposed that, to be. That, 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 I think that was the goal, right? Yeah, I think that was the goal. So, so yeah, like so, like the comments about it, like not being that funny. I would argue that go watch the Big Short. There are moments that are funny, but it's not, I wouldn't call it a, like a funny movie. Like the funniest character in that movie is Ryan Gosling because he is ridiculous, but largely like Steve Carell's character is super serious. Like he says some like smart alecky things, but like he's never like making jokes and shit. Like he's not. And so this felt in line with that, which is why I liked it. Um, I, look, I, I think it's probably his best work, honestly. And I love The Big Short. I, I, think it's, I think it's phenomenal. But I think this, in a way, just works. And I think maybe it's because, like, while the banking industry thing happened and it was a problem and it obviously has done real damage, this is a more serious topic. And I think, I think like, this... And it, like, it affects everyone in a very specific way all like very similar way of we're all going to fucking die if we don't do something i think this has um longer legs right i think yeah. this is a little more evergreen whereas the big short yeah it could happen again probably will but the ever present you know uh, uh, uh the the ever present like thing that is going to destroy this planet in some way shape or form is here right and it's not and like we're not doing anything about it right and um yeah i i really enjoyed it it's a little too long but um but i i really enjoyed it i might actually go back and watch the big short i i really like that I, movie too man. i i've seen the big short i think maybe four or five times I, yeah, like i love it i really I, like it. yeah it's, it's it's phenomenal so yeah look uh don't look up is great and also meryl streep um once again, proving that she's the fucking goat, man. Like, like she basically plays Trump, and it was awesome. <laughs> like, it was great. Yeah. And Jonah Hill, Jonah Hill deserves all the credit in the world for for his portrayal. He's playing himself basically, but he's so fucking good. His interactions with Jennifer Lawrence were so fucking great. Oh, d do you want to come in? <laughs> Close the door. Like, fuck off. Um, as sort of the Don Donald Trump Jr. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, he represents character. you know. Like all of their kids, like he's yeah. an amalgamation of all of them, right? Because he can he can be smart, but he's dumb, yeah. and he's vapid. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was great. Um, yeah, so I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely. Um, next up, uh, there is a review up in the coming distractions feed um, for the three fifty five. Uh, the video will be up by the time that you uh, watch this on video on YouTube as well. Um, the 355 is the new movie um, starring Jessica Chastain, Lupita Nyong'o, Diane Kruger, and um, uh, Penelope Cruz and Sebastian Stan. Um, it's about these, like these, basically these spies from different agencies around the world: the U.S., Germany, uh, Britain, uh, along with this Colombian psychologist, um, who have to get together to get this technical MacGuffin. Uh, before it falls into the wrong hands, basically that's. But, uh, so I, but the, I, but, I but, was, but the I, like the hook is like, but they're all ladies, so. Yeah, I I I haven't listened to your review yet. I want this to be good. I don't think it will be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I remember seeing a preview for this. A long time ago. And w when I, and then it just kind of disappeared. And um, like, I wonder when this movie was done because I feel like they've kind of held this on the shelf for a while. And um, cause this was supposed to come out. This was supposed to come out in like not summer, but like 
that period between summer and fall when the when the Sorry, prestige movies come out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that that dead zone. It was supposed to come out during that time. I forget what year. And it just didn't. And uh, then I started seeing previews for it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that movie. And and then I and then I, I looked at the old calendar. And I said, oh, shit. It's coming out in January. <laughs> this shit is a dud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all i have to say about that okay (laughs) um yeah you can check out you can check out my review um i'll be honest i didn't hate it that's all i can say Uh, look look that's all i'm looking for i'm i'm very lenient when it comes to movies i just want to be entertained and i don't want to sit there for two and a half hours well you won't sit there for two and a half hours that i can guarantee you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you also there for two and a half hours. Um and all I will say is um do you have do you have a lot of like clothing that you could put into a washing machine and then perhaps put into a dryer <laughs> and then you can sit down and watch this movie. Yep. This seems like a perfect TBS movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Every weekend for a month um every year. So, yeah, check out the 355. Um one thing I will say, uh, not to give anything away about my review of the movie, <laughs> is you know, those women are super attractive. Like, like they just pick really good-looking women from an array of um, backgrounds. Like, it's kind of dope. Like, it, it's kind of dope. It's like, yes, 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 and yes. So, that's kind of nice. It's great. Um, it's nice to see, like, women of color getting a shine, uh, which I appreciate it. Uh, all right, let's talk about the first two episodes of uh, the book of Boba Fett. You've only watched I've one watched episode. Second. Ah. Yeah, I only watched one episode. Um, what did you think of the first episode? I thought it was okay. Um, not a lot of. Um, so it was interesting seeing you know how Boba Fett got out of that sand vagina. Yes, that uh, that sand butthole, <laughs> and. Um, and he, you know, he got out how I would imagine he would get out, right? So, but the first yeah, episode, I believe, I, I believe Patton Oswalt called it exactly, right? Like, I in wouldn't that, be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they just watched that episode of that show and was just like, oh, I'll just do that. You know, it literally is like this, this, <laughs> the this pan down from the dual sons of Tatooine, and then the claw, the hand <laughs> of the bounty hunter comes out of the sand. It was like exactly <laughs> what he said. It was hilarious. Um. I thought it was okay. Uh, I enjoyed it. But I'm looking forward to the second episode because I hope that uh, – I can't remember the actor's name and I don't want to butcher it. But I hope the actor playing Boba Fett, he looked like he slimmed down a little bit, which um, which is what I need to do because my doctor told me I was obese yesterday. And um, that is that is something that – that's something that cuts to you, cuts, cuts deep. Yeah, grown ass man telling another grown ass man you're obese. I'm like, God damn, yo, <laughs> nigga, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, you're, he's like, well, you're obese according to BMI, but like, uh, you're still obese. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, all right, yo, shut like, up. T- like, take some bass out of your voice. Yeah, you're saying it that right. hard. Like, <laughs> goddamn, like, like, I'm gonna need you to, I'm gonna need you to exercise some bedside manner. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna need you to exercise. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Period. <Yeah>. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop what you're doing. But I, I, I he looks like he slimmed down. Um, he did. He, he definitely he, did. And he looks better in that suit. Um, but he didn't do a lot. And um, you know, I hope that this this character is going to be a badass. Um, because. Yo, Ming Na Wen, she ready to fight, yo. Like, she's just like, yo, Always. no, you can't. Yeah, you can't. You, you know, stay ready. She ain't got to get ready. You know what I mean? Like, yep. like let's let's fucking do this. Like, no, nah, these people got to pay fealty to you because you are the man. And he's just like, I mean, you know, I just wanna, I wanna rule through respect. She's like, like nah. no, nigga, like rule through yeah, fear. Re- yeah, respect this this rifle. <laughs> that's what that's what I respect. <laughs> yeah. Like I that that is like something that's like very obvious in the first episode. I'm like, are you a little too gung ho? Like, relax. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> like, just take it easy. Like, I love it. it though. I love it though. Um, somebody got to be. 
because yeah. uh, this Boba Fett so far isn't. But I haven't watched episode two yet. I haven't watched it because my wife wants to watch it because she saw uh, a uh, she liked the Mandalorian and she saw a uh, commercial for the book of Boba Fett. So now I'm locked into watching the book of Boba Fett with her. Mm. But that's, um, that's that's a real shame. So but glad I'm, my wife I'm looking does not watch to. television. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, what I will say is I agree with you. Um, I was not blown away by the first episode at all. I thought it was, thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. Yeah. Um, not bad. I just thought it was like, oh, okay. Like this, this, this isn't hitting for me like I was hoping that it would. That being said, what you are looking for in the second episode, you get it. You get it. All right. And like Good. they do, they do, and I'm not going to give anything away because you haven't seen it, but um, – they give you more, like, you see why they're showing why he has this, like, respect from other people, and it's not just because of fear. Like, he's actually not as hard, like, a hardened piece of shit as he's sort of portrayed, right? Like, oh, everyone's terrified of him because he's fucking scary. Like, yeah, he is. And, like, when he shows up and he's, like, ready to throw down, like, yeah, don't fuck around. But he's also, like, super smart and resourceful and like respecting of like a different culture and shit like that. Like it's, it's kind of interesting. So like you spend a lot of time with him and the sand people, like as a flashback, uh, like a decent amount. And it's actually pretty dope. Um, I imagine that, uh, I imagine that the character of Boba Fett, I haven't read any of the extended universe and guess what? It doesn't matter anymore. Um, I haven't read any of it, but I imagine that Boba Fett is like, just a consummate professional. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's um, kind of how he's portrayed. Yeah, just a guy like he's not like some psycho, right? He's not a he's not some uh, you know, bloodthirsty like rampaging psycho killer, nor is he like a Deadpool wacky type. Like he's just a he's just a this is a jo- this is a guy who's very good at his job and his job just happens to be bounty hunting. Right. And um and I like that. You know what I mean? Like there's a um, – now I'm hoping that isn't too similar to um, the Mandalorian. I forget his name. Like Jin Dodge or some shit. I don't know. But um, – it, it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel that way. It, okay. it feels very right, It good. feels very different. Um, but as the story is getting going, like you get to see – like. It, what it's doing is it's doing what the Mandalorian did. It is filling in parts of that universe um, and making the universe feel more well-rounded and full, right? Instead of these huge gaps in, like, information and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. But I definitely was, like, very, like, first episode was fine. Second episode picks up a lot. Like, it, it does. So I was happy to see that because I definitely did Good. not want to be like, oh, man, like, the Boba Fett show sucks. Like that's not, and it not even sucks, but like, this is not that great. That would be unfortunate. Yeah. I wanted to be appointment television for me. Like I, I want to be like Wednesday, like up oh, it's time. It's Boba Fett time. Yeah. Right. Like when Mandalorian is on, like, don't talk to me. <laughs> like, right, oh, right. Leave me alone. Leave like, me alone. We're watching this now. We're watching this now or I'm watching it and you watching it later. That's right. what I want. Like we watching it now or I'm going to watch it twice today. Like that's right. <laughs> what it is. It's fine. It's just dope. Um, before we uh, go to the, the topics, do you have any expended extended thoughts on the Matrix um, resurrection? Oh, uh, yeah, because I didn't I didn't really talk about it. Um, look, I didn't think it was bad. Um, I, I think some people like really didn't like it. Um, one criticism I would say um, that I've heard a lot is like, "What was the point?" Um, and I agree, and I disagree. Um, where I disagree is it is a commentary on the gamer perspective, right? Like that's a big part of the commentary. Like that's like literally why they're, I mean, you watched it, right? Um, yeah, there, there's literally like the horde mode or whatever they call it. Like there's commentary on gaming culture there. Um, I think gaming is not... (sighs) I, I don't think it's gaming culture specifically. I think gaming is a as a very good allegory for what they're trying to do. Right. So I didn't particularly care for it. Um, I felt the first part of that movie was just really, really 
really like slow. Yeah, slow. Yeah, it was slightly self indulgent to the point of like, okay, I get it, right? Like, it's it's on the nose to to a point where it's like. And and I mean, this might sound weird because we just talked about don't look up, which is one hundred percent on the nose, right? But but that's the point even, of that, right? Right, but this is even more so, right? Like, yeah, it is. don't look up is don't look up is on the nose for something that would benefit mankind. This is on the nose for someone who is having a a crisis about their art, right? And that, you know, the, the whole, well, you're going to have to make another matrix if you, or, or, or else we are going to do it without you. Like I, I 100% believe that that is a, that that is a conversation that happened between Lana Wachowski and the higher ups at Warner Brothers. No, that, no, that's, that's, you, you don't have to guess that, that like quite literally they said we are going to make another. They were making two more of these with you or without you. That's absolutely right. right, right. And I understand that you know you that probably pissed you off, and you wanna you wanna like I I get it I get it, but that first part of that movie was just I I didn't care for it, and maybe it's because I had recently rewatched all of them, including you know especially the first one, which I have you know, vividly in my mind. And it just felt like a little too self-indulgent. Like you're, you're better than this. Like I, I want to get, I want to get to the story that you're trying to tell. And ultimately I felt that the story, I, I don't want to say what's the point because like really what's the point of any movie. Right. That, that's um, what I'm saying. Like that kind of criticism. Is like it's, it's just a, it's just a weak argument. Like you gotta, you gotta give me a little more, but the um but the this movie in as it relates to like the world of the matrix doesn't um i don't see where it fits in and well, it, it felt it, like go ahead if it just felt like it felt like this person was forced to make another one when they didn't necessarily want to make another one yet because they didn't have anything to say Right. And, and the thing is where the ending, the ending feels too, I don't want to use the word reductive, but it kind of, it's a bit reductive in that we've had that ending at the end of the first movie. You just double, right? You just, oh, now two of them can fly. Okay, cool. I want in that, in this universe, I want the fight between the humans and the machines. How are you ending this? I want, I want, like, I let's want, progress right, that let's... story. Like, okay, fucking, you know, Niobe is still alive. Where is the resistance to make it to the machine city and destroy it and actually free mankind? Because at this point, we just have Neo and Trinity have superpowers inside the Matrix, but nothing has changed. There on the was outside. a machine, there was a machine civil war, and some of the machines are helping humans. Like, right. Right, that's true. Like, like that is what you should be drilling down on, in my opinion. I, you know, maybe they'll do it, but th this movie ended up being, uh, you know, once it got over the fact that it had to, it, it had to make another one, it ended up being, um, Trinity has to go save his girlfriend, or or Neo yeah. has to go save his girlfriend, right? And um, it, it just does it. It just didn't. It just didn't grab me on like. A philosophical level it didn't grab me on a on a, like a visceral action level uh and look i know that's gonna be hard right because like you the can't Matrix, compare it to the original like you just can't, you can't right you, you can't. can't like it just you, but at the same time like i can you, well, you have I mean? to you have to to some extent right you have to compare it. right it's i mean it's pretty much it's it's the same it's the same director the same movie house right like I have to compare that. I have to. Mm -hmm. um, and it just didn't. I'm Look, I don't like giving Charlie any credit, but he's right. He's 100% right. Wire food don't look good now, man. It really doesn't. It looks silly like, it, now. 
Like it does. We didn't. We does. didn't have. We didn't yeah. have the technology to do that shit. Like back in 1998, we just didn't have it. We do now. Like there's no yeah, excuse. Man. Like you got to go f- full board. Like just CGI the shit. Spend real money. Hire Weta or whatever, and just like call Disney. Like whatever you got to right. do. Like this, and I yeah, get it because like you can't you can't expect Keanu Reeves to get back into like fighting shape to learn how to fight and all that shit again like nah yo yeah. so uh, but i and here's the thing i like the performances i like the new crew i like i think jessica henwick's character was yep. uh was cool Bugs. um yeah i i um yeah yeah abdul mateen as like robo morpheus uh was cool spoiler alert for a movie that you probably should have seen if you were going to see it yeah. um I I, I, I like that like explanation, the, by the way. Like I, I didn't I didn't hate that explanation of um of why he looks different. Why like I, I kind of like yeah. it. I, I thought that was kind of fun. I didn't really understand Smith. I I did I didn't I didn't. I, get that's it. why I said my review. Like they didn't really explain it. Oh, he's back. I was like, how? What? How and why? How and why? Right? Yeah. Because Smith was Smith was the anomaly that was so powerful that the machines asked. Neo to kill him. Jesus to yeah. kill him right. so that they could survive. Like Smith should have been Smith should have been just gone. Right. Yeah. Like, there's you don't no reason. Him. There's no reason for Smith to exist. And I understand, right? Like he programmed this character to be a Smith type in the game, but like, why would that Smith come back? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. And then, yeah, I agree um, you. what's his name? Um, uh, Doogie Howser, what's his name? Oh, um, Neil Patrick Harris. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, obvious bad guy is obvious, right? But like, I, I didn't understand his his plan. Um, it felt more like play. He, like, uh, yeah, let me just see to, what let me see what what would happen. Yeah, he felt more like a Loki type than than the and he's than the architect. And I know he's not the architect, he's the analyst or whatever, but he felt like a Loki type, just kind of fucking with people just to fuck with him. Right. Like, yeah, I convinced the machines to create another matrix to keep you people in line and we have to keep you two separated so that we can keep, so that people can choose whether or not to be in the matrix or in the real world. Because I get it, right? Some people don't, some people want to stay ignorant, right? Right. Some people want to keep their head in the sand. I get and, that, and that, but, and that was the agreement at the end of the last trilogy, right? That was right, but I don't know, man. I I, I was it, disappointed. It feels like a missed opportunity. Um, it does. Like I feel like there is. I think the biggest, if if I had to give the biggest like negative to the movie, um, it it lacked any philosophy, and that was at the core of what made those movies interesting. Right, like yeah, the action's dope and all this other stuff, but what got people around the water cooler talking about this stuff was the philosophy aspects, and and this sort of like massive understanding of like how complex and intricate and weird this world is, or, or this world within worlds, um, and we didn't get that, and like I feel like that was that was a misnomer. Look, I thought Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss they looked good, like. They look like they were still like interested in the characters. I just think that it just didn't have as strong of a script as it needed to be. Yeah. So, so. Hey, look, if they're going to do a sixth one, I think you need both the Wachowskis back for it. Or if it's just Lana Wachowski, you re- she really needs to think about what do you want to say? Don't rush it out in a year. Like, take some time and really look – Neo and Trinity need to be, if they are there, if they are going to be a part of this story, you need to figure out how do they take down the machines once and for all. That needs to be the story. And there needs to be some level of just like Neo, you know, walks out of the, out of the matrix and he's got powers inside the quote unquote real world. Cool. Then they both need to possess those powers. And they need to use those powers as a way to, you know, like marshal up people against the machine city. Like there has to be a thought process behind this. 
And see, they've written themselves into a corner, I think, because I don't think you need to destroy all the machines, right? Because at this point, the machines are sentient life. So you're saying, well, they need to commit genocide. I don't think so, especially because or, the machines or, you know, are figure, working. I, I mean, right. I'm the talking about like the working, bad ones, right? Like whatever. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta figure out, you gotta figure out how to. It, it's you gotta figure out that balance, right? And that's what the commentary should be about. Right. Like there are extremists on one side, the machines, and there are extremists on the other side, the humans. Right. Make those left and right. 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 It's not it's not difficult. The, the people that are the people that are trying to get shit done, as usual, are the ones in the middle. And they both have to de- they have to deal with all of this. Right. Like that is something that I would be super interested in uh, in seeing. Right. So and and in like in that way you can even make like the idea of the extreme you know the humans are like we need to kill every machine and just like start over you can make them you know you can make them sympathetic like look these are the these are the kids or the the people who watch their their friends and family die um during the third movie right like look I saw like, you know, I saw these generals get killed. I saw my family get destroyed by those fucking, you know, figure out a figure out a really derisive word for machines, right? Like, you know, like kind of muties, that type of thing that like really is, you know, like really um, catches, right? And then on the other side, the machines are like, these motherfuckers are batteries. They're not our friends. Fuck them. And like, we're not going to stop. We're just going to destroy them. And then you have other robots, you know, some other sort of sentient life and be like, like actually Neo fucking saved us from um from Smith. We couldn't have done that without him. Like maybe maybe right. that is our future is figuring out a way like we're super brilliant robots. We can't figure out a way to run on something besides human energy. Surely we can, right? And like right. Like it it'd be kind of dope that here's Morpheus, right? Like you have the shit right there. Like Morpheus is a machine at this point. Right, he he is a machine working alongside Neo, who is a human being. There's your connection. Like it's it's not hard. Like Morpheus gets pulled back into the machine world and like trying to reprogram. He's like, hey, wait a minute, these guys are not all terrible. Like it's not hard to figure out. So I would like to see that. Look, if they do another one, cool. But I want it to be like actually make a fight against the Machine City. Um, if they don't do it, it's fine as well. I yeah, don't, I don't, yeah. I don't care. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> um, look, Micah won't Spider-Man. be alive to see it, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, probably not. Probably not, because uh, I'm obese. Uh, <laughs> that should really hurt my feelings, man. God damn. See? <laughs> I got to make a change, man. Mm. Um, That's sad. Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, Haven't seen it. Becomes the, becomes the first pandemic-era movie to cross one- Billion dollars. God globally. damn. My sister saw this, had no idea uh, what was going to happen at the really? second half of that movie. Had no idea. Because wow. she doesn't follow this stuff. She likes it, but she don't follow it. And she was just like, oh my God, it was the most amazing thing ever. Really? Like, that really? must have. It was literally the worst kept secret ever. But she loved it. That must have been. I, I actually envy that experience. Yep. Right. To be like <laughs> to not know and just be like, I don't know, guys, what's gonna happen? Holy shit! Like, just have your mind blown. That would have been amazing. I mean, that's like us seeing Endgame, right? Like, yeah. like we didn't know. Like, you know, you kind of be like, well, they're gonna defeat Thanos, but like, yo, you didn't know to the level of what they were gonna do, and that was mind blowing. Yeah. So that's dope. <laughs> like, because this was the world's worst kept secret. But it yeah, was. <laughs> yeah, to to see that and not know anything like that, oh man, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, Spider Man hit uh hit a hit a billion dollars. Um, Sing Two uh op- had a solid opening. Matrix Four uh, and the King's Man, not so much. I um, heard that. I heard that is not good. I mean, it just looks like it's not good. Really, I <laughs> like thought the trailer. Looks, I thought the like trailer looked good. all right. I think it's because it's a period piece. I I, uh, I don't that's particularly fair. like period pieces, and um, 
you know, it gives off League of Extraordinary Gentlemen vibes to me. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> that's that's. Mm. <coughs> See, good. Yeah, By the way, that's a movie that should be redone. That is a movie that should. That's be a redone. great concept. It's, it's a, a great, great concept, concept, and boy, was it a piece of shit. Oh, by the <laughs> way, I didn't. I failed to mention, and I do want to go back. I just want to let you know this between you and me, not anyone else. I just want to let you know the director for the three fifty five was Simon Kinberg. All right, let's continue. Oh, come on. All right, yo. All right, yo. Just like I it's just, this is between okay. me and you. That's not. That's all not right. about you guys. It's just between Mike I'll and I. I'll just... catch it on. I'll catch it on TBS. All right, I'll catch it, it on TBS. It'll be on there a lot. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, man. Spider Man billion dollars. That's crazy. That's absolutely insane. One point four billion dollars uh, to date. Um, Proving the power, Spider Man. Man, like even during the pandemic, people were like, uh, "I'll risk it." <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, man. He's one of like he's one of the most. Um, he's one of the world's. Uh, uh, most popular superheroes, man. Yeah. If he's 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 Marvel's most popular character, and in the pantheon of uh, superhero dumb, he's probably four. Uh, uh, behind DC's Trinity. Trinity. So, yeah, I'm not surprised, man. Yeah. Um, I can't really see anything else interesting in this uh, article, but uh, yeah. Well, the one thing I will say is bodes pretty well for uh, Marvel going forward, right? Like they ain't got to do date and date anymore. Mm-mm. Like yeah, if no. if Omicron yeah. is done by the time May comes around for um, uh, multiverse um, into the multiverse of madness, nah, yo, that movie's that movie's cracking a billion with no problem, with no problem. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no absolutely. Problem. Especially when the when the marketing ramps up. Dude. And um and more people see that trailer, yeah. um that we saw at the end of uh, uh No Way Home, yeah man people are gonna be people are gonna be into it, yeah. um, <laughs> well, <laughs> more Spider Man news, um, <laughs> it is the- it is yes, <laughs> please go on <laughs> the next Spider Man feature yes. Jared Leto's uh, Morbius has been delayed until <laughs> April 1st. April Fool's, guys, uh, in the wake of uh, Omicron. Is it uh, really the first? Is out. it really the first? Yeah, it's April 1st, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be a fool to pay for this one. Go ahead. <laughs> no. The Daniel Espinosa directed superhero creature feature will still be the first Marvel release of the year. I hate when they do stuff like that. It's not, it's the first release of a movie starring a Marvel character. Yeah. You know? Like it's not, yeah, a, just like, right. like yeah, Sony made a billion dollar movie. No, <laughs> right. No, they didn't. Come on. I know Avi Arad <laughs> has been yelling that in Kevin Feige's voicemail all week, but like, no, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. Right. Uh, it's delayed. Couldn't come at a worse time, as mm. the interest in the film has reached an all-time high, uh, <laughs> due in no small part to the spectacular exploits of No Way Home. I don't know who wrote this. That is a lie. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't think people would equate Morbius to No Way Home. If anything, they would. It looks like Venom. They would equate it to they would th- they would link it sh- strictly to that. Like I don't think if I show this to my sister, she's not going to be like, "Oh yeah, the Spider Man villain, Morbius." No, right? Like he literally sa- he literally makes a joke about him being Venom in the trailer. Right. right. So, so, but this moving this moving to April. I mean, uh, when does uh, when does Multiverse of Madness come out? The beginning May. Of, of, May. of May. Yeah. So you got like a month. I, I don't see it. I, I think it's a better move than releasing it in January. But I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. The uh, only reason Venom did well is because people like Venom. That's correct. And by the way. Um, 
uh, into the um, in the multiverse of madness is uh, May sixth. Yeah, so they got a month. It's not good. It's not all right. They well, they got a month, and they open pretty much up against Sonic the Hedgehog two, Ambulance, oh. and Fantastic Beasts: uh, The Secret of Dumbledore. Nayo, that's Oof. not good. No, look, not good, man. look, Sonic the Hedgehog is gonna have some fucking legs. It is. Mm-hmm. It's gonna have legs. Um, that's something I need to finish watching. I was enjoying that first one. Um, that's gonna have that's gonna have some serious legs. I think Ambulance is probably gonna do pretty well. Like that's the that's the Michael Bay movie. I'm gonna man, watch the shit out it. of that movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that movie looks ridiculous. It looks ridiculous. I'm gonna get you out of here, brother. All right, sure, whatever. Like, oh look, Dutch angles. All right, that's great. <laughs> Got me here for it, man. <laughs> that shit looks ridiculous. Um. But I, but I think there's also something else here with Morbius moving, right? Like, obviously, some people are like, I saw some bullshit. L- look, you guys got to stop. Not not our fans. You guys aren't idiots. But, like, folks got to stop believing every dumb thing that gets put on social media about these movies. Like, you you have to. Oh, it's confirmed. No, it's not. No, it's not. None of it's confirmed. <laughs> They're lying to you. Um, but, you know, I saw one, one um, site was like, well, the um, – the real reason that they're pushing this back is because they're they're doing reshoots because they're gonna put a Spider Man in it, one of the Spider Man um, versions in. It. No, they're not. No, no, they're not. Look, could it happen? I guess it could happen. Is it likely to happen? No, no, that's not that's not what's happening. Um, if they're doing reshoot, if they're doing reshoots just to throw a Spider Man in it, it's not gonna be what you want. Right, it's not. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. Uh, it's hey. gonna be that that Wolverine scene in that one X Men movie where he was Didn't running around sense. with. The, right, it's gonna be that, and it's not gonna. It's not gonna be what you want. If you put Spider Man in a movie with Morbius, you want Spider Man fighting Morbius, right? Like not swinging so, by uh, yeah. while Morbius flies the other way. <laughs> like that doesn't make sense. Yeah, that doesn't. That doesn't. <laughs> That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so I'm going to say it's not going to happen. Confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed. Um, like, but I, like, I also think that there is there is a studio issue here. Like, sure, they're moving it because of Omicron. Like, that's fair. The problem is you're willing this quote unquote blockbuster. You're willing to just move it around so easily, so easily. Yeah, yo, this ain't three five five, yo. Like, this is supposed to be like a big superhero movie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it might be good. It might be great. <laughs> it might be great. Uh, <laughs> see, that's what you get. Um, but it's yeah, you don't like if this is like if this is the big money maker and you know you got yourself a hit. Nah, you don't move it. You don't move it so easily. You don't move it so easily. Yeah. And you don't put it, you would move it to a place that you weren't running up against a Marvel movie a month later. You'd want to give it some legs. And you wouldn't be running it, It like Morbius now, re, re, uh, now leaves a relatively uncrowded January. It moves to a busy April where it'll open a week ahead of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. A week ahead of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So you're, you're possibly going to lose the second week in the Sonic. And once you lose yeah. it, that's it. That hits that hits the momentum of that movie, and it's over. Um, Morbius has to be great in order for it to be Sonic the Hedgehog in that second week. Because Sonic the Hedgehog, people liked, and kids liked it. And yeah, if you're talking by April, like Omicron is likely going to be likely pretty diminished. That's going to get people back in the theater. No, and then you're talking about ambulance, which is an which is like an adult film that's going to rival taking away some of your seats from Morbius, right? Nah, yo. And then two weeks, and that Sonic the Hedgehog and Ambulance come out on the same weekend. So mm-hmm. any like, nah, yo, you're gonna throw it up against a super popular kids movie, which this is a comic book movie, so you need some of those kids. And you're gonna throw it up against ambulance, which takes away your like 25 and older crowd, right? Like it's it's a pretty decent um, back and forth. It's a Michael Bay movie, dude. It's gonna 
is going to do numbers and it's going to, it's going to be a crowd pleaser because that's what he does. Um, and then two weeks after that, you got Fantastic Beasts, which is another fantasy shit that's going to pull people from it. Then you've got Multiverse of Madness. No. Like, no. They know this movie is not going to do well. That's what that's what that means. Yeah. Yeah. You love to see it. Um, next up, uh, Batman the Animated Series is considered to be one of the best animated shows ever. Never saw it. Uh, Claim for its mature tone, complex storytelling, brilliant voice acting, and overall faithfulness to the source material. While fans were hoping that Warner Brothers would develop a follow-up to the 90s series, it seems we were getting a continuation, just not in the way we thought. Earlier this month, it was confirmed that a continuation of Batman the Animated Series is in works as an audio drama. While that might be disappointing for some fans who are hoping for a more traditional animated series, perhaps they can take comfort in knowing that both Kevin Conroy and John Glover will be re- returning to voice their roles as Batman and the Riddler, respectively. Uh, Alan Burnett, who produced the original show and wrote 11 episodes, is attached to the project as well. Um, yeah, that's fine. Podcasting is all the rage. and um, So I hear. So I hear. <laughs> yeah. And who doesn't want to hear... Uh, who doesn't want to drift away, uh, so, uh, drift to sleep with the dulcet tones of Kevin Conroy in your earbuds? Hey, um, it's fine by me. I just hope it's not like for pay. I hope it's free. Yeah, I don't know if I would pay for it though. Yeah, you're I'm right. Not going to. I, I don't think I would pay for it. Like, I um, like the Wolverine series. I listened to the first season. I need to w- listen to the second one, <laughs> but I waited until it was free. I'm not, I'm not paying for that. Also, I'm not paying for Stitcher. Like, no. Get out of here. Yeah, that's why I didn't watch it or listen to it. Yeah, it's free now. It's on like, Stitcher. No, it's uh, free is now. It still, is it only on Stitcher? No, it's not. It's everywhere. Oh, okay. No, once it went free, it went everywhere. All right. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't use Stitcher. No. Anymore. No. But it, that was a good, like, at least the, the first episode or the, excuse me, the first season was really good. It was actually, it was, it was quite well done. So, um, it was a fun, like, original story. But um, I could, I would definitely listen to this. As long as it's on something I, I can listen to. Um, but I'm not going to pay to listen to it. Yeah. Um, lastly for me, um, when speaking with Total Film, Tom Holland said he came up with an idea for him to star as a young James Bond in an origin story movie for Sony. Quote, I had a meeting uh, after or during Spider-Man Far From Home with Sony to pitch this idea of a young Bond film that I had come up with. Apparently, he had recently saw James Bond Jr. and was like, that's it. No, that's not it. Um, It was an origin story of James Bond. Uh, It didn't really make any sense. It didn't work. It was the dream of a young kid, and I don't think – the Bond estate were particularly interested. Look, I get it, right? James Bond is for a young English person. I would imagine that James Bond is a dream role. Oh, right? absolutely. And uh, but you you gotta you gotta you know James Bond is in his late thirties, early forties. Uh, that's when he's at his best. So you got you got fifteen twenty years, Tom. Before you and you got to shed that baby face, yeah. Before you can, uh, before you can be a James Bond, uh, you can't rush it with a young James Bond. I mean, he looks more and James like Bond, he looks more like Q at this point. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like a young <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, a young James Bond. I mean, his parents die in like a in like a climbing accident or some shit. So he's an orphan, yeah. and. I mean, I, I I'm sure you could come up with something, but I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to just uh, I don't want to just see some poor orphan struggling to make it. Now, I look, I I'll tell you right now, I think the idea of them doing James Bond and this being James Bond's nephew, James Bond Junior, which makes no sense in the naming convention, no um, sense. 
I, I would be fine with that. I would be fine if they did a live action James Bond Jr. I, I prefer it. I actually prefer it over James Bond, to be honest. I think it was a great show. Um, uh, made total sense. And um, yeah, that's no, fine. That's fine. Look, this no, leading no, to no, Uncharted no. is the weirdest fucking story I've ever heard. Yeah, no, um, like, however, the pitch inspired Sony to rethink its adaptation of the popular video franchise, video game franchise Uncharted and put Tom Holland in the starring role. Yo, I, so I don't want... I, I like Uncharted, man. I, I really do. It's not that great of a game, but it's a hell of a playable movie, right? It's a hell yeah. of an interactive movie. And um and I and I, I like it. But I I You know this movie's gonna Indiana, be bad. You know this movie's gonna be bad, right? Like you know that it's gonna be real fucking bad. You, you know, know that, right? It's gonna yeah. be really bad. It's not gonna be Tom and, Holland's fault. And it's not even gonna be Mark Wahlberg's fault. It's Sony's fault because Sony doesn't make good movies. They don't. I just don't. This screams like, well, people will like it because we put them in the outfit and we're filming the the action scene from the third game so people will like it. Nah, yo. It's a little more than that, man. And it's not even that much more. (laughs) Right. It's just an Indiana Jones ripoff. Right. Like, but at the same time, like it's Indiana Jones and National Treasure combined. Like that's it. No, nah, yo. But it's not gonna be good. This isn't. This, this is gonna, gonna be, be bad. good, man. This is Sony not be doesn't good. look. You know what I would. You know what I would. What I would like them to do. I'd like them to do this Uncharted movie. Then I would like Sony to sell the ability to Disney for thirty five percent to make more Uncharted movies. <laughs> Just do that. Like, just Spider-Man, this shit. Like, they should just start outsourcing all of their work to other studios and just to take a cut. Because <laughs> they're not good yeah. at this. They're not. Yeah. They're not. Dude, all of their movies look the same. Morbius looks exactly like every other Sony fucking movie I've ever seen. It does. It does. It's the same loot. They use the same fucking loot. They're just like, oh, uh, the Sony loot? Throw that shit right on there. <laughs> like, this movie is at least bright. Um, but I'm sure there's going to be plenty of Sony esque scenes. No, I have zero desire. Who produced to um, who produced Tom- Tomb Raider? I don't know. It wasn't was Sony, it? was it? Uh, no, it was MGM and Warner Brothers. Yeah, I was gonna say they're I'm, making I'm another some, one of those. I'm getting, I'm getting some Tomb Raider vibes, but like not as good. And Tomb Raider wasn't good. Nah, yo, it's not gonna be worse <laughs> than Tomb Raider. Nah, yo, it can't be. How did no, they mess that movie than, up? It's going to be worse than Tomb Raider. Because the because new they Tomb Raider I, or the Angelina Jolie? Yeah, the Tomb new Ra- no, the new Tomb Raider. It's not going to be it's not going to be as good as the new Tomb Raider. And the no, new Tomb dude, Raider I can't great. I refuse to believe that's true. I refuse to believe. Yeah, no, I'm not going to let you gonna say that. No, I'm not I'm not going to let you say that on I'm not going to let you say that on Al Gore's internet. It's going to be worse, man. It's going to be worse. You know why? Because they're doing the same thing that that Tomb Raider did. They said, "Oh, let's just put this actor in the exact same cosplay outfit that the character is in and and film some of the big memorable action scenes and just kind of throw a story around. Like, nah, yo, I'm getting some real strong Tomb Raider vibes from this <laughs> and this ain't, and that's not good. That's not I re- good. I, I'm so disappointed. Like, I'm glad they're making another one because I actually like the woman who played um, Laura Croft. She was good. Um, but I was super disappointed in that movie because the story was so obvious and so easy to film. Like that first Tomb Raider movie, that reboot game, like just do the game, you know, just do the story in the game. They were like, no, her dad's still alive. No, her dad is dead. <laughs> like that's kind of a major part of her entire character arc is that her dad is fucking dead. Make it gritty. Make it feel like the game. Beat the shit out of her. Maybe not as much as the game. Relax. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. Like, dude, I think you might have a problem with women. Like, <laughs> just take it easy. Oh, to start the game, you have to light yourself on fire. What? Right. Why? <laughs> and take a 20-foot drop. Like, yeah, all right. Come on, yeah. come on. All right. All right, all right game. Relax. <laughs> but, like, that game, like, that game was a perfect blue for it. I mean, granted, the ending was a bit weird with like the samurai and shit, but that's the supernatural element of that universe. Like, 
That's yeah. It's it happened. I mean, it's again another Indiana Jones clone. Like what happens yeah. at the end of Indiana Jones movies? Yeah, some it's, supernatural nonsense. Right. That's just that's just the nature of it. Right. Sometimes right. there's aliens. I hear. I would know. Never watching that movie. <laughs> Um, all right. Next up, um, I titled this, uh, this was inevitable and obvious. Apparently people are really upset, um, that the DC universe, not that the hierarchy is changing. That will come later. The um, hierarchy of power. About to <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> Stop saying that you fucking asshole. Stop it. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, please stop. And lose some weight before you die. You're all, you're in your fifties. <laughs> um, yeah, I take that. I, I resemble that remark. <laughs> nah, yo, he's too big. Yo, you gotta like, yo, you gotta take it. You gotta take it down on the peds, man. Like you're in your fifties. Yo, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a rude awakening. Just don't. I want nothing to happen to you. Um, so apparently, DC fans were shocked to know to realize that um, uh, what's what's her face um. Uh, I can't remember this woman. Uh, I can't remember her name. Um, she's like um, a, a movie reviewer. I, she has like, I think she's mentally not well, but. Um, oh, Grace Randolph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's her name. I don't think she's mentally well. I don't, I don't. She blocked me on Twitter because I said that once, I think. Uh, it's fine. I don't, I don't think she's neurotypical. I just don't, I don't. And I don't understand how no one else notices it. Anyway, that's, that's not trying to shit on her. I just think she's fucking very odd. Like, I just think she's odd. And she says like really racist and like weird shit. So I don't really give it an excuse because having certain disabilities is an excuse for shithead behavior. It's not, it's not. I don't care if you say it in your car or not. It's not a fucking <laughs> shithead behavior. Stop it. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's just not, it's not. And I think oh, she's an shit. asshole. So anyway, Grace Randolph and, um, and apparently this, uh, very, uh, well-known leaker, um, online has said basically that the flash movie, uh, flashpoint is going to erase pretty much all of the Snyder, um, Snyder universe, like all of it. Um, they basically said that, um, you know, Sasha calls, uh, Supergirl will be taking over for Superman. Um, Michael Keaton is serving as Batman and he will, um, uh, give the mantle of, of the, the Batman character over to Leslie Grace, who will be playing, um, Batgirl, um, in her solo HBO, uh, Max feature. Um, in addition, um, Ezra Miller is said to form a new Justice League alongside Wonder Woman Shazam uh, at the end of the movie. Um, look, I don't know if any of that's true, but what I would say is, duh, <laughs> what did you think a Flashpoint movie was going to do? Why do you think they went with that story instead of any other Flash story? No shit, dude. Yeah, like, they, what, are you, what are you upset about? Like, I mean, not even what are you upset about? Like, I get that you're upset because you think those movies are, you know, should be remain around. But like, yeah, no, that's what they were obviously doing. I, I didn't understand why this was like a shock to anybody. So whatever. Good. I think those movies yeah, are shit. I, so it's fine. I mean, it's not the first time they've done it in like a feature film, right? Like the uh, the DC animated universe when they had their. Uh, serialized run of um, of of films, uh, the the thick neck run. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, care, had, for, I didn't uh, care for that run. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. They, um, I heard it gets really super into, crazy at the end. They really rolled themselves into a corner, and they did their own end game, and basically, and like they had a movie. It was called Apocalypse War, and like people were just dying. Like they were killing off characters, heroes and villains. And um, it got to the point where like, they were like, well, Flash, maybe you can kind of run real fast and just kind of undo all this. And that's what he did. And then the whole goddamn DC animated universe reset itself with Superman, Man of Tomorrow. So it's not the first time they've done this. The better um, 
those things, the, the, the movies that you like are still available. Um, I, I think, I it's think fun, it's funny the that whole, you say that. <laughs> I think the, I think the whole Snyder cut thing was a really, really bad idea. Um, yep. And I'm not saying that because I didn't care for the movie. I'm saying it because you can't give power to these people. And I'm including myself, in, not for this, but like <laughs> if you are making art for consumption, like you just got to put it out there. You can't, you can't bend to the will of the people because once you do and they see that you do, that's all they're going to do. They're just going to take advantage, man. Like they're just going to well, try and take advantage. Well, and it's not even the will of the people. It's the mob. It's the mob. Right. It's the mob. Because right. look. The vocal minority. Right. And look, whatever you think of the Snyder Cut, what like if you loved it or you hated it or you're like, yeah, it was fine, whatever. Like I'm not even here to debate. I'm not. I'm honestly not here to debate the, the merits of the Snyder Cut. What I will say, this is. It's just a fact. They released statistics on the Snyder Cut. Of all the people who watched the Snyder Cut, 25% of them finished it. 25% of them finished it. That's 25% of the people who finished it who started watching it, let alone all the people who were like, Snyder Cut, I'm not watching that shit. <laughs> right? Like, and there are plenty of people who are like, yo, I already saw the fucking Justice League. I get it. It's not for me. And they just didn't watch it. But the people who were like, I'm going to sit down and watch this four hour movie. Watched one hour of it. Or excuse me, 25% of those people actually finished it. Right. 75% of people didn't finish it. And by the way, when I say finish it, I don't mean watch all the way through their credits, right? Like they're talking about probably people who like watch like finish it probably means like 80% of the movie. Right. Right. 25% of those people finished it. You can say restore the Snyder cut all you want. You can love those movies and, and, and be mad that this is happening. But when it came push to uh, when push came to shove and you got the director that you loved, his vision unencumbered by anything, people weren't really feeling it. And they could watch it at home for free. <laughs> and they weren't really feeling it. Right that you know, you could say, well, you know, if it was in theaters, or, but it wasn't in theaters, you could watch it at home in your time. And 25% of people were like, right, I'm gonna watch it the whole thing. Like, I'm just saying like it, that to me is inarguable. Like it's not, that's not about whether you think the quality is better or worse or whatever. Like, I do think the Snyder cut is a better cut than what we saw in the theaters a hundred percent, but that's irrelevant. Yeah. 25% of people finished the movie, dude. That's horrendous. That's horrendous. What do those numbers look like for, I don't know, like, you know, Godzilla versus Kong or any of those? Like, what does those numbers look like? I bet it wasn't, I bet it's a hell of a lot higher than 25%. The fact that we know it was only 25% tells me that Warner Brothers is like, now shut the fuck up. That's what that yeah, is. Yeah, like, we did this and we it, we did this and you you people, you like, didn't watch we it. wasted our money. We You're wasted watching. our money, yeah. and um, and, time. and look, I th and look, they didn't want to do it, right? They didn't no. want to do it. <laughs> like, let's just be honest. The only reason they did do it is because they had HBO Max and they were trying to pimp that shit. Yeah, and um, you know, and they knew that you, and they had a feeling that you people would sign up for it, and you ain't show up. I guarantee you, if those people showed up, they wouldn't have done. They wouldn't have said, "Hey, let's just release our entire 2021 movie slate on HBO Max." Nope. Yeah, <laughs> more on that in a minute because there's actually a story about that. But I do want to read a quote. Um, somebody, somebody messaged Ez Ezra Miller um, and said, "Hey, man, uh, fans are going crazy thinking the movie this the Flashpoint is erasing Zach's movies." They don't see the potential this movie will bring. This is the, now what I'm about to read to you is Ezra Miller's response. Now, Micah, you've worked in corporate America enough to know a CYA move if you've ever heard it. 
So I want you to listen to what he says, and I want people to really listen to it. No power or force in any known megaverse would or could ever erase Zack Snyder's mighty works. You can take that quote, take that to the bank, to the press, to the schools, to the military, and other pillars of capitalism. I'm forgetting because of 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 that thing where if you try, wait, what? I'm forgetting of yeah. that thing where if you try to think of a group of things, you'll always forget one of them. Okay, like, wow, he really is that character in real life. Um, <laughs> like, it's just like, dude, what do you, like, don't focus on the capitalism part. That's not what we're really talking about. Like, stop being weird. Um, but his point is that you can't erase his works. Yeah, it's exactly what you said. Yeah, those DVDs exist. That's what he's really saying. Yeah, yeah. That's all he's saying. Like, he's, right. Like, and he don't want to piss off fans. That's it. Right. I don't understand. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I kind of do, but like things change all the time, man. They do. Things change all the time. Like, what if um, I, I, I don't. What I don't understand is the absolute love for this one dude. This one care. dude. I don't get it. And 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 maybe Christopher Nolan also. Like they like those two dudes have a, a a fan base that I just I, I I don't know I don't know where it comes from like yeah they make good movies but Jesus Christ so does everyone else a lot of people make good movies I mean I don't, I don't know that Zack Snyder makes good movies <laughs> Christopher uh, he, Nolan makes good he movies. can he can storyboard the shit out of a movie he can shoot a movie he can shoot a right? movie I'll give him he shoot, he a movie. shoot a movie, dude. He I rewatched. Movie, look, look, I rewatched that fight in Smallville the other day for Man of Steel. That shit was fun, man. Like, <laughs> dude, if you give this guy, honestly, if you give that guy a good script and let him really go for broke, I think he could do it. You can't let that guy write. Like, you can't. Yeah, you he can. Can't. He can adapt some stuff, but uh, writing, but, but, uh, <laughs> like mapping out a universe, that ain't for him. It's not for him. Nah. Remember that time when people thought that because he was um he had a he had a comic book behind his turkey on Thanksgiving that he was directing more DC movies. <laughs> Yo, you guys are in a fucking cult. You're in a cult. Calm down. So look, yeah, they're gonna erase the Zack Snyder shit. That's the point. No shit. Yeah, Spoiler alert. Reboot. It's called a reboot, guys. It's called a reboot. Spoiler alert. Like I know y'all said. Seventy five percent of us. Uh, okay with it <laughs> like we are we are so um yeah you can scream all you want like dc is moving the fuck on they are yeah. suicide squad was already a better movie than anything Zack snyder did it was sorry yeah it was it's a better movie. and nobody's complaining about well no people are complaining about the air cut but yeah, I don't want that. nah yo nah they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't screaming from the mountaintops like they are with Zack Snyder. No. And by the way, all these people are mostly bots. So whatever. I, you know, <laughs> just saying. It's a thing I've noticed because I have eyes. Like, motherfucker, your account is six months old and the only thing you tweeted about is the Snyder Cut. Either you're a maniac or you're a fucking bot. Um, next up. Could be a bit of, from a little bit of from column A. A little from column B, I suppose. Um... <laughs> Uh, with tent poles bound to surge, um, uh, surge the box office in 2022, uh, the great theatrical streaming day and date experiment goes out like a dud in 2021, according to uh, Deadline. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, I think they're right. I think this might have been a disaster for a lot of people, man. Um, do you want to know how much? They estimate Black Widow lost because it was um because it was put on streaming day and date. How much? Uh well, let's see. It reportedly um let's see, because I, I want to get this exactly right. Um adding to the further erosion of the box office uh for any theatrical day and date release on streaming is in fact um that these movies are pirated promptly with clean 4k copies in several languages spread across the world. By the end of August sources in the know informed us that black widow 
had been pirated more than 20 million times. That's close to $600 million in estimated losses for Black Widow alone. But people didn't want to, people got mad at Scarlett Johansson because she wanted to get her money. You're insane. You're insane. (laughs) That movie was supposed to crack a billion dollars. It was. It was. When was that? When did that movie come out? When was it supposed to come out? Uh, I don't remember the day. The date. Can't remember when, but um, but yeah, of course, man. Like that movie. That July, movie. July if it didn't 9th. crack. It, oh man, shit! Right in the summertime too. Hell yeah, that movie. That movie would have did gangbusters, man. I mean, if not a billion dollars, eight hundred million. Like yeah. that ain't that ain't nothing to fucking sneeze at. That's Guardians numbers, yeah. right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it lost six hundred million dollars. Like, that's insane, dude. Like, that's insane. Um, look, I think also Warner Brothers released a lot of shitty movies. They did. Like, it well, was kind I of a year for them they, where they were just kind of like, eh, we're fine. I think that's why they did it this year, right? Like, they didn't have a lot of bangers. They didn't. They didn't have a ton of really good movies. Um, Dune was really good. Yeah. Um, but I don't think Dune would have done, like, crazy gangbusters in theaters. It's it's too niche, I think. Yeah, well, I think they would have. Uh, I I agree with you, but I also think they will. They really would have like marketed the hell out of that movie. Yeah. Um. So I I don't think it would have. Uh, I don't think it would have um, done poorly. But yeah, man. Like, uh, look, I, look. Everybody was like, "Yo, this is the new thing. This is the, this is what they're gonna do." Nah, yo. No, forty five days is the new thing, right? I'll, I'll, I'll thing. give you that. But people who are like, "Nope, theaters are dead." No, they're not, yo. No, it's too they're much not. money laying on the table. It is. That's too much. Right. Forty like forty five days is great. Like forty five days is enough for me to go. Damn, I wanted to watch that movie, but I didn't have a chance to. And like before you know it, like that's just a little over a month. Like it's not like just as you've forgotten about the movie. It pops up on streaming. You're like, oh shit, cool. I wanted to see that. Like guess, that's perfect. Guess what comes out? Guess what comes out in a week? Eternals. Right. January twelfth. That's right. <laughs> right. A lot of people haven't seen so, it because people didn't want to risk it. Right. Guess what? It gets a so second chance. You go see Eternal. Yeah. So, so yeah. uh wow, man. Um, look at all these movies. Doom, uh, that would have done pretty well. Godzilla vs. Kong, I don't think would have done well. Space Jam. No, it, it would have done well. It would have done well. Kids I, it, would go look, to see it. It's probably. Probably. It's shit. Probably. But yeah, it would have done gross. well. Mortal Kombat, no. Um, <laughs> no. That movie was not good. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman really needed a theater experience. Not because it would have yeah, made the did. movie better, but it would have gotten more people in before people found out it was a piece of shit. Yeah, she would have gotten like a like a good like first weekend, second weekend, and then people were like, "Yo, this movie's a piece of shit," and then it would have like Burr, it would have fell off. But instead, people found out like hours after it was released, like, "Oh, this White. is bad." Yeah, no, it needed it. Yeah, reminiscence I heard was not good. Those who wish me dead was not great. Cry macho, I, I have not heard good things about. Um, King Richard would have done well. I think it would have done much better. Um, probably um uh, mortal Kombat. I, I know everybody likes mortal Kombat, but like come on yo like nah, that that movie wasn't it man no uh, suicide squad would, but it wasn't it suicide squad would have done, done gangbusters like it would have yeah that would have done big um i don't watch like horror movies like that but i think the conjuring probably would have done pretty well um just because it's um you know, it's it's just just popular. I didn't have a chance to watch the Mini Saints of Newark. I'll, I will watch that when that gets back on um, HBO Max. Um, Judas and the Black Messiah, like, I don't know that it would have done like super big anyway, um, just because of the nature of the movie. But that was a fantastic film. Um, Tom and Jerry would have done Gangbusters just because kids in the Heights would have done really well too. Yeah. So, and again, the Matrix would have probably done really well too. It would have given, much like the Wonder Woman thing, it would have it would have gotten a weekend or two big before people really um, 
got to talking about what they didn't like about it. So, yeah, yeah, no, I think this is, um, it's a, it's an interesting experiment, but I think you're going to see the 45 day experiment. That's, that's where things are going and not even experiment. Like that's just going to be the thing from now on, which is fine by me. Like there's plenty of movies. I can definitely wait 45 days. Like I could wait 45 days for some movies or 45 or 55 or 355 the amount of days <laughs> <we're seeing. laughs> like, it's fine it's fine it was fine it's fine um don't rush out to say that just don't it's, it's fine um um Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media are exploring the sale of the CW. Apparently, this motherfucking channel has not been profitable in years. <laughs> um, are you sad about this, Micah? I know you're. Um, I know you're a big CW fan. It hasn't been profitable I, I since 2006, by the way. Mm. Um. This is the same channel that uh, had Homeboys Not a Space at one point. Is, is that it? Wasn't that when it was the the You People Network? The You People Network, UPN. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was the problem. They stopped catering to they stopped catering to the science fiction <laughs> black people uh, demographic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys, <laughs> that's where they that's where that's where it lost its profitability was it was right when they took yeah, it yeah when when uh Makes when sense. flex and ron johnson from a different world <laughs> that's right. were taken off the air from their um from their space from their wacky space adventure flex alexander oh my <laughs> remember when that guy played michael no, flex jackson. alexander played michael jackson, jackson i do know that that's exactly <laughs> what i was just saying it looks insane it looked insane you look nuts. Oh man. Um, um so I all right. so Good. here's a question. You sell and you sell the C dub. Um do you take all of the you take all the hero shows, you throw those on to HBO Max and get and just sell CW off to someone else? Um yeah, I think you keep what works, right? I mean those and, are pretty uh, well, popular. How do, I mean how does how does this work, right? Like they how does selling the CW work? I don't understand how it works. Um, do you just you don't give up the properties, right? Like Warner, if Warner isn't isn't um, giving up all their properties to to, I don't I don't I don't understand how I, selling a TV station works. Yeah, I I I don't quite know because like Warner owns the Flash. Warner owns. Green Arrow and all this other stuff, right? So, right, um, they wouldn't be doing that. I would, I would imagine they own a lot of <laughs> what's on the CW, right? Yeah, but I think maybe they would be okay with parting with like the Walker Texas Ranger <laughs> property. Like, I feel like they wouldn't really give a shit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, it says it isn't immediately clear whether Viacom, CBS, and Warner Media plan to sell the entire network or retain minority stake. So maybe that's what they do. Um, I don't know who would even buy this. Like, to be honest, I think that the CW is one of the worst channels on television um, because, you know, it's the same show, it's the same narrative crammed into a bunch of different genres. Like it, like all of the superhero shows feel like all of their sort of teen drama shows too. Like they're not, they're not particularly different except for one has a talking shark on it and the other one doesn't. Well, I mean, that's the point of the show, right? Like that's, that's the point of the channel, right? Like mm -hmm. Freeform is, is the Disney version of the CW. And, um, I mean, I guess if you sell the network, whoever buys it can make literally whatever they want, right? You can you can get some um, you can get some you know right winger to buy that thing, and and it can be like that can be the the new haven for right wing for, tweens. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. I'll Just never nothing, watch nothing but shows about nothing but shows about like God and not having sex, but like 
secretly doing it and then dying and going to hell. Right? Uh, you I, know what? That, <laughs> there might be something I'm into. I don't know. It, it feels better than the last few seasons of The Flash where they're fighting with uh, lightning lightsabers. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, look, if they play that, if they play that one movie – like Jesus 33 AD or some shit. Uh, I, I, look, I would watch that again. Yo, that movie is wild. That movie was super wild. Like, what are we even doing? Yo, we have time travel. Let's go back and kill Jesus. Like, what? <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, all right, let's move into uh, What the Fuck brought to you by JTD. Man, uh, yeah, new let's year. see what you got Same for the new year, bullshit. you asshole. <laughs> a bomb squad oh god okay I, I accept a bomb squad scrambled to A&E after a mortar shell gets stuck in man's bottom ah uh, the man who tripped who tripped and fell on it <laughs> uh, is expected to make a full recovery yeah I bet he um, is bomb squad technicians rushed uh, after to to A and E after a patient was admitted with a mortar shell stuck in his ass. Troops from the Eleventh Explosive Ordnance Disposal Regiment rushed to this hospital uh, after being notified by police that the patient had presented with a munition in his rectum. Uh, the man was said to be a military enthusiast. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. Woo. <laughs> who found the shell while clearing out, oh, really, uh, but somehow tripped, oh, really, and fell into the 57-millimeter piece of Army ordnance. Um, what is 57 millimeters? What does that look like? <laughs> Too big. Jesus, look at it. <laughs> um. Well Nah, I'm good. I, I, yeah. Um, is this what those people do? Is this why they love guns so much? No, I think that I think that's it. I think I mean they call them ammo sexuals. So like, this is the next. Uh, this is the next phase. It's, you got you got to take a bullet. You shoot yeah. one, then you're gonna take one. Like this is a 57 millimeter piece of army ordnance. You do you know what the measurements are? You want to know, you want to know what the measurements? Are? I would I would I would I you, don't. But yes. Would you want? Do you want length or girth? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you know what? Let's let's go length first, and then um, we'll we'll go girth. length. Length is 6.7 inches. Okay. Respectable for you know, right. it's like the average. Like, like it, yeah, it's like is is the the bullet's white. I got it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the girth is two point two inches in diameter. Oh come on, dude! <laughs> <laughs> so look, if you're if you're at home and you don't know what two inches is, look at your at the first two digits in right. your index finger, and that is about two inches. Now that thing. Six inches long, shoved up your ass. That's what this dude. Nah, I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm good. New year, same down? me. No thanks. <laughs> no. If you sat down too hard, oh. and just yeah, like I mean it. You know, <laughs> it's the ride of your life, I guess. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> why though? Know? You know, like in 2022, man, we gotta like we gotta normalize not not doing this. Like, just go buy the devices that are made for this. You don't have to use household items. Like, nah, yo, that's gay. That's gay. Buying a dildo is gay. <laughs> Using a Sticking bullet. Sticking a bullet up your ass like a real man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anyone to think I'm some sort of queer. <laughs> just give me this <laughs> army ordinance what are you doing man like it's cool whatever you're into is fine i don't care just stop using bullets <laughs> that's a, that's that's a wild start to the year that's a, that's a that's a super wild start um jesus christ <laughs> an ar- piece of army ordinance um <laughs> <coughs> jesus my story um 
jerk alpaca kangaroo skewers and mealworms, we tried out the Bush Tucker Christmas dinner. Um, apparently there is a weird, uh, little part of the world, um, that this like archipelago, um, or that's the name of the restaurant. It's called archipelago. Um, and it's one of the quirkier restaurants in this part of the world. Um, and they have things like, um, elk and ostrich, which are not that weird camel and crickets. Again, not that weird. Um, but they also have um, Python uh, Carpaccio, uh, which actually sounds pretty good. It takes nine days to make. Um, mm. If you don't know what Carpaccio is, it's like a very thin, very thinly sliced raw meat. Um, and so, yeah, you can have very thinly sliced Python. That sounds pretty good. I try that. Um Spicy crocodile wrapped in uh, vine leaves, uh, zebra jerky, um, like jerk chicken, but jerked alpaca, uh, and kangaroo skewer- skewers. You try any of those? None of those are bugs. I feel like you try some of those. Yeah, I would try it. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know. Zebra jerky? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a little cruel, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's because I'm, I'm on the top of the food chain. Wait, jerky is cruel? No, the fact that it's coming from a zebra, I think it's cruel. Cruel, as in uh, probably not an unusual, good. unusual punishment. Yeah, like 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 when I think of a zebra, it would be like eating a dog. You know what I mean? Like a zebra? Aw. Nah. Yeah, well, because nah. zebras, because zebras are like, you know, nah. they're they're like nah. they're like Fuck. horses, but special. Nah, fuck zebras. Yeah, they're special. They're delicious. <laughs> nah, fuck that. <laughs> but yeah, I would eat it. They're yeah, not sure. bugs. If they're not bugs, I, I'd eat it. You're, like you're animal, not trying like mealworms. No, no, I'm not the I'm not the boogeyman, the uh, the wrestler who would come that with no teeth, who would come to the ring with a bunch of worms in his mouth. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really fucking disgusting. That's, that's really gross. Uh, cucumber infused vodka jelly. Um, I'm not trying that. Yeah, you're a coward. Um, that goes with the mealworms, apparently. Um, yeah, no, this place is really weird. Um, but yeah, I've had like, what's the weirdest meat you've ever had? Um, I don't. Um, I don't eat a lot of weird meat. Um, <laughs> there's a quote. I had uh, I had venison at this like. This one place called Alchemy that I don't think they uh, they did it right. They would prepared it right. It was it was chemical cooked, and um, I don't think they did a good job with it. Um, I have had uh, gator, but that's yeah, not that. weird, right? I've had like, venison. That's just uh, yeah, gator. It tastes like chicken. Yeah, yeah, gator tastes like chicken. It tastes like little little chicken chicken pop tarts or whatever, um, chicken nuggets. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Like I haven't had snake. I've had quail, but like I've had quail before. I've had pigeon again. It's a bird. No pigeons are dirty. No, get out of here. Get out of. What were you slumming it? No, I was in you, London. You went to you went to the you went to the 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 McDonald's of fowl establishments. <laughs> McFowl. Get a fucking pigeon. Yeah, it was, uh, it was McFowl's. McFowl's. <laughs> yeah, it was a delicious <laughs> London pigeon. I've had some pretty I've had some pretty weird uh meats. I once had I once had a meal where I had like eight different types of meat. Like it was it was fucking bizarre, like ten different types. Um I'm trying to think. I've had pigeon, I've had kangaroo before, I've had um I feel like I've had camel before, that feels familiar to me. I may have had that. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe, I think probably kangaroo is the weirdest. Um, and then I've had like some bugs and stuff, but, but like, I would imagine crazy. that would be kind of tough, you know, kangaroo, like kangaroo. Yeah. Kangaroos, yeah. they all swole. Are they all they hopping all around. They can box <laughs> and shit. You know what I mean? They're always trying to fight you. They're always trying to square up. Yo, you know they're I mean? they dangerous are. fucking animals. So they're like super jacked. Yeah, they are. They're fucking crazy. 
Um, no, it, out, yo. as it, it was as it was prepared for me, it was quite delicious. Um, I did, I did that restaurant that I had all these like crazy meats at one point. Like I've had elk and things like that too. Um, they had a dinner club that you could join that my my wife and I were about to join. Um, where this the chef because he was like I don't know, he was like Norwegian or something. He would bring in these like strange foods from around the world like once a month and you had like this private dinner. And like at one point we were talking to someone who was a part of it. They were like, yeah, we had lion like last month. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> They're like, yeah, we had lion. I was like, was it good? They were like, not really. It was not good because it's a fucking predator. <laughs> like that's that's the problem. Predators are generally not very good. Yeah, all they do, they have a p- piss poor diet. All they do is just eat meat all the time. Yeah. Like they don't, you know. And lions not, eat lions. Not, like they eat uh, lions. Yeah. A lot of people yeah, don't know this, like but uh, Scar ate Mufasa. Like that's fucking true. It's a part of, that is absolutely <laughs> true. Watch that movie again, dude. He does. He eats Mufasa. No, I remember. Yeah, he's yeah, playing I with remember. his fucking skull. Like, ah, doing some Hamlet shit. He ate that nigga, yo. Like that's fucked up. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fucked up. We teach our kids that's a great movie. It's fucked up. <laughs> like, like, pay attention to the shit you're, you're letting your kids watch. It's insane. Um, yeah, no, I would go to this restaurant. This looks cool. Um, I've had Crocodile. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, okay. Cool. Um, no trailers. Yeah, I would eat all of that stuff. I would yeah. eat all of that stuff. Yeah. You're, you're like, I don't scare easily. That's my thing. I definitely would eat alpaca. That sounds That sounds fucking interesting. Fuck, yeah, I'd fuck I would. That uh, I'd fuck that alpaca up. Yeah, I would eat it because it's, you know fluffy and cute yeah and then you just and, wear it uh, like you just be like an asshole you eat the alpaca and you wear a coat made of its fur out yeah uh, you just like you come yeah. in wearing wear the to coat. the restaurant right you wear that <laughs> shit in like bring me my dinner i'm wearing it bring me the rest of it um <laughs> like a boss um all right no trailers this week um but we'll be back in uh, our normal fashion uh, next week. Uh, so we will see you guys uh, next time. Feels good to be back. Um, maybe Michael will still be alive. I don't know. He um, he will either die of um, whatever ails him or, you know, maybe his diagnosis, uh, you know, he, maybe he'll have prognosis negative uh, <laughs> by next week <laughs> from his doctor. Um, all right. That's it for us, guys. We'll see you next time. See you.